Hey guys, welcome back to Mythbusters, where today we're going to be exploring the extra armor bonus on chest armor. Introduced in the Taken King, you can now get various bonuses related to damage that is dealt to you, Solar, Arc, or Void. One bonus in particular grants a flat armor bonus if you are using a certain elemental subclass. So I wanted to see if this actually made a difference, and if it does, how much of a difference it made. Unfortunately, testing armor is very, very difficult in PvE. Enemies are not 100% accurate all the time, certain shots do more damage than others, and it's generally tough to tell if an armor bonus is actually doing something or not. So, most of this testing was done in PvP to actually prove whether or not the armor bonus can actually have any sort of impact. The easiest way to test to see if these armor bonuses did anything was against sticky grenades. They deal the same amount of damage every time that they stick, you don't need to worry about the blast radius or anything else. They do the same thing every time and they're probably the most frustrating thing to get killed by. I would certainly like to know if I could survive them. Let's look at arc armor first. Here I am as a striker titan with almost max armor and an arc armor bonus on my chest. I have shoulder charge on as opposed to unstoppable which gives slightly more armor. I get stuck and I die. Alright, let's ramp that up. I get unstoppable now so I'm as armored as I can be. So that's with unstoppable, not shoulder charge, with an arc armor bonus. Flux grenade is thrown and I die. It deals 2 damage, which is the impact of the grenade hitting me, then 122, and a bonus 79 for the stick, that's 204 damage. Of course, one test is never good enough, so we test it again, and this time, I don't die. And then some more tests, and I don't die. You can see that the grenade sticking me happens, I suffer the 2 damage, so I'm not sure if me dying the first time was a fluke, or what? But with an absolute max armor build and arc bonus armor, it is possible to survive a flux grenade stick as a titan. However, titans come with higher base armor than the other classes, meaning that they are more capable of surviving such things. So let's test a couple things on my warlock. We'll test flux grenade again. With maximum armor capable on a storm collar and an arc armor bonus on my chest armor, I do not survive the grenade. We tested this two more times, and I still did not live. Next up was Storm Grenade. With maximum armor capable on a storm collar and yada yada, I was able to survive. So I dropped the armor down a bit and tried again. Still lived. Eventually, I dropped it to as low as I could possibly go, and no arc armor bonus, and I still lived. From this data, we can actually visualize what the bonus armor on the chest actually does as a percentage of our health. On the top is me with the lowest amount of armor on my warlock after being hit by a storm grenade with my chest armor bonus, and on the bottom is without. My measurement of the health bar was 432 pixels across. With the bonus, I have 5 pixels of health remaining, and without the bonus, I have 2 pixels of health remaining. 5 divided by 432 means I'm at 1.16% health, and 2 divided by 432 means I'm at 0.46% health, meaning the armor bonus under this experiment gives a bonus of 0.7% health. I'm under the impression that Magnetic Grenade would be the exact same as Flux Grenade in that it would kill a Warlock, but I don't have a visual test to actually prove so. Let's move to Solar Armor. I am a Sunbreaker with a Solar Armor bonus and Max Armor on my subclass. I get a Fusion Grenade flung at me and it deals 2 plus 170 plus 79 damage. It is impossible to survive a Fusion Grenade stick unless you activate your super as it is exploding on you. A Fusion Grenade deals 251 damage, and no amount of bonus armor on any subclass on any class is going to enable you to survive under normal conditions. What about Trip Mine Grenades? Well, it is completely possible to survive a Trip Mine Grenade without any bonus armor on your chest armor. You just need to have a high armor build in general. However, it is not possible to survive a Trip Mine that sticks you under any normal conditions. A Trip Mine that sticks does 273 damage, which is way above lethal. 
A trip mine on the wall only does 194, which is survivable with high armor in general. For a quick test, I experimented with two armor values. One was the lowest a Titan could go, which is about half the bar, and I did not live. Then I bumped it up a slight amount, and I did live, both of these having the solar armor chest bonus. Finally, we have Void Armor. The Magnetic Grenade from Defender Titans works the same way as the Flux Grenade does in terms of damage, however, it has a secondary explosion after its initial explosion. Basically, this means that it is possible to survive a stick from a Magnetic Grenade if you're a Defender Titan, but you need to move out of the way of the secondary explosion. Literally any damage will kill you if you are stuck and hit by the second explosion. For kicks, we'll look at something like Vortex Grenade on Void Armor. On the left, we have an armor bonus, and on the right, we have no armor bonus. I walk into an active Vortex Grenade and manage to survive one extra tick before dying. One tick is about 230 milliseconds, so you have basically a quarter of a second more to react to a Vortex Grenade being thrown on you and you sitting in it for whatever reason that might have been if you have a Void Armor Chest bonus. So what about some other grenades that have a pulse, like, well, Pulse Grenade and Lightning Grenade? Having an armor bonus is not going to save you from any of these grenades for any longer than you would normally survive. They do their damage in bursts. Four ticks from a Pulse Grenade is always lethal, and two ticks from a Lightning Grenade is always lethal. A full hit from an Incendiary Grenade, which is 170 damage plus all of the ticks, which is another 35 damage, is lethal damage regardless of armor bonuses. Meaning, in theory, player health with a max armor build and armor bonus has a maximum health of around 204, give or take one or two health. However, Tripmine Grenade makes this assumption questionable. If I couldn't survive a Tripmine with this much armor and an armor bonus, and I could with this much armor and an armor bonus, and Tripmine does 194 damage, then something seems a little off. I chose not to test Arc or Firebolt Grenades simply because they don't have the capability of being lethal on their own and are usually a supplementary tool in PvP. So there you have it. The armor bonuses do actually do something, they do have some function, and for Titans, it can enable you to survive some sticky grenades every now and then. But in general, it feels like an incredibly weak bonus. It often feels tough to notice armor bonuses in PvE, although in PvP they are significantly more noticeable due to more exact damage values. Surviving trip mines is easily the most noticeable effect of a high armor build, but it doesn't require any chest armor bonuses to survive. This test was not perfect either, and there are quite a few data points missing. It's obviously a logistical nightmare to test every value under every situation. I would say the biggest flaw is movement. Movement may enable you to shave off a couple of points of damage from a grenade for whatever reason, sticky or not. So if you did happen to stick someone and they don't die, movement was likely a factor. The fact that I only did a few tests with each grenade is also a factor, even though it feels like it shouldn't be since damage and armor should be a consistent experience. The fact that I sometimes lived versus a flux grenade and sometimes didn't was a little worrying for the integrity of the test. But hopefully this was a satisfactory starting point for finding out a little bit more about the armor bonuses. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.